All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. It's not Long Island, it's the world's. Get this through your Monty skull. I am trying. I'm doing my best. You know why it's the world's, don't you? No, I don't. Because Jim Beam said so. (laughs) There you go. What the heck? And that's what it's all about. I want to thank everybody for joining us on this Thursday. Um, Yeah. Had a good this week in wrestling. Oh, had a great. Jacques Rougeau. Great this week in wrestling. Must listen. And this uh, must must listen interview yeah, Mount, and this Ma- one Mounty this and Monty. one this will be a must listen interview with yes, our special absolutely. guest Karen McDaniel a back to, on the board how are you sir what doing good up? how you doing always good to see you man always, always a good pleasure, to see my you man. all right Farrell Madonna is back at home and feeling better after emergency hospitalization Madonna is back home and feeling good as she recovers from the bacterial infection that led to her emergency hospitalization well oh, thank goodness I was worried. I'm such a big Madonna fan. I'm, I'm thrilled. Would she fly in five doctors from five different nations to make sure that her care was taken? I, what am I going to worry about, Madonna? She don't worry about me. Why? If, he, if Madonna would have turned around and not made it, yeah. that would not have affected you? Not in the least. Really? I'm a metalhead from the 80s. I don't care. She's still not I'm an icon. I mean. She's not an icon? I'm just fucking around. Of course she's an icon. She's a legend. Right. Of course she is. I was thinking. How did this... I was thinking when I read the article. I yeah. was like, singing is no, and acting is no different than wrestling. Right. She just took the name Madonna. Right. That's her now a name. That's like right. We used to make fun of Warrior for taking Warrior and making it his name, but what's the difference? Dude, there is no difference. Prince became a symbol. Don't even call me a name. Exactly. I'm a symbol. Exactly. I can't pronounce a symbol. I mean, what do you, what do you do with that? <laughs> what are you doing with right. that? I, uh, call me some. But then when records weren't selling, then he became Prince. Well, again. yeah, you know. He, he back to back to being Prince. Then he yeah, it. yeah. He took that little red Corvette, shot straight down to the trademark uh, office, and went back to Prince. Do you think if Sky yeah. Blue becomes famous, she'll name be like make her name Sky Blue? Yeah, and she'll have a child named Sun Yellow. <laughs> it's great. It's just great. I just don't. I, don't, I don't know where to go. Well, with that. are you? You must be. You're, well, you, are you a Madonna fan? You are, right? I'm a huge Madonna. fan. You are. Right. There's one song I th- I think I like from her. One song. One. Which one would that be? I like Into the Groove because I like the bass line. That's a great. It's a great bass line. Yeah, that's a great song. But in general, yeah. Dude, Madonna, name me some songs. I'll tell you if I like them. I don't know, like a virgin. That's ridiculous. I can't stand it. And I like Like a Surgeon much more from Weird Al. Go ahead. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's sexier too when he's doing the, uh, you know. Uh, you know. Hold on. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I, or am I? I? Wait a minute. Hold on. We're gonna do this real quick. What? what God is greatest hits. Top hits. Oh, she's got a million. I'm sure. She's a superstar. Right, like a prayer. Nah. Into the groove. That's great. Vogue. No. No. And don't say holiday either. Holiday. No. Open your heart. No. Open no. your heart. No. Really? No. Who's that girl? Oh, God, you're killing me. No. Like a prayer. No. Justify my love. No. I give up, man. Yeah, I'm uh, telling you. Holiday. No. Nope. Jimmy. What? Jimmy. I like Janis Joplin. I don't like Madonna. Don't okay, you see where I'm going on. with this? What would you like? First of all, Janis Joplin had don't you, don't. two... Decent songs. Janis Joplin had an amazing soulful blues voice that was killer. Okay, nowhere near Madonna. Oh no, you're right because Madonna can't touch Janis Joplin. Oh come you're on, right. stop it. You're right. You're I out agree. of control. No, I'm not. I can't wait to talk to our yeah. guest. Madonna wouldn't have been invited to, to the Monterey to... Pop Festival. I'll tell Dude, you that. You can't. Uh. If you're gonna take up women, great, great women. Singers, Janis Joplin, she Stevie is not Nicks, there. Grace Slick. Uh, those to me are great. First of all, I'm gonna even go on record to say Christy McVie was a better Christy... singer than. Stevie oh, she had a Smooth, smooth voice, but Chris, Stevie Nicks has the magic. I'm sorry. Well, I'm she just also sorry. has Mick Fleetwood writing for What? She also had Mick Fleetwood writing Yeah, could you for. picture Christine McVie singing some of the songs that Stevie sang, though? Stevie's great. Get out of Stevie's town. Stevie's great. Yeah. And if you were to challenge Madonna with Stevie Nicks, I mm-hmm. would I could I would definitely say if we went head to head. Yeah, Stevie Nicks. We did head to head, the head with out singers. Out of the water. But Goodbye. Janis Joplin? No, bro. Janis Joplin was one of the greatest blues singers ever, men included. 
Men included. Robert Plant, as a matter of fact, I, pops some stuff. F- everybody from out Dennis. there, I love you guys, but this is what I call I'm a, Pharaohism. I'm, I'm a rocker. He will stick to I, his I know rules I'm right. of Pharaoh, I'm a rocker. even when care. he truly doesn't believe oh, I, it inside I, his well, heart. Well, if you're asking me who was a bigger star, then it's obviously Madonna. I'm not stupid. But. Who's a better singer, in my opinion? It's not even close. It's an insult to Janis Joplin. Watch Ball and wow. Chain from wow. Monterey Pop Festival, 1967, and tell me that that's not a pair of pipes. You don't even know I, the song, wait, so on, you can't on. say nothing. I didn't say Janis Joplin wasn't a good singer. All I'm saying is she was okay. Ugh. She was okay. Okay, you're tone deaf, but anyway. If you just want to sit there and scream in a microphone. If that's how you look at high it. High on heroin, I don't know what to Well, time. you know, high on heroin. Federal is, judges you know. in Connecticut. Uh, Connecticut. Kentucky and Tennessee. Are you high on heroin? Portion of state. transgender youth care bans. They what? Federal judges in Kentucky and Tennessee have temporarily blocked portions of bans on gender-affirming care on the transgender youth, meaning basically that... Tra- Youths under age yeah. cannot do anything to affirm their gender, like a gender change physically right. or gender drugs, right? Like hormones that's been blocked, mm. right? Until you're at age. Feelings on that decision. No, I refuse. You give me your opinion first. Wow. I refuse. I argue because with my opinion. Because yeah, I don't, I I don't know. I, my opinion is going gonna, is gonna to probably... I agree. I think if you're underage, you don't have a right to make that decision because you don't know what your decision is. And people could argue with me about that. But just like anything else, you're under 21, you know, you can't... You know, are under 18, you can't drink, whatever the rule is. I don't even know what that is. You know, you're under a certain age, you can't drive, right? So I feel that you cannot decide how you're going to live your life on a sexual basis as far as the physical being that you are until you're of age and can make that conscious decision. Like, in fact, can you tell me, do you think it's okay for an eight-year-old to get a tattoo? That's a little premature. Why is it premature? Because the, the, you're way too young to know what the hell you're doing yet. That's the point. Beautiful. Gave it right to you. Yeah. And there you go. I agree with everything you just said. Perfect. Period. Perfect. Yep. By the way, this hat's all jacked up, man. You didn't even say anything about it. What do you mean it's jacked? Oh, it looks like it was in my ja- back seat of my car. Well, you said that it was weathered. <laughs> I didn't realize weathered. you left it out in the rain for six weeks. July 6th, we got what? Steve Kern joining us in studio. That's, That's next awesome. week after July 4th. Did you know that he was almost Bob Backlund? Yes, from the Bob Back, <laughs> from the Kevin Sullivan interview. Thank you for that. God knows. I uh, Poor Kevin Sullivan. Did you know that? I screamed Wait, at him about Hannibal. We haven't seen him since. Have you, did you know about that, about Kern before that? What, that he was supposed to be? The, yeah. no, no, I don't know. No, we, neither did I. I didn't have no clue. So good. The Monty and Farrell show is good for something. We learned something you're during learning, our own interviews. You're learning I, things. We really are. You're yeah, we learned things. Janis Joplin's better than Madonna. In your world? Right, in my world. In yeah, your world. Yeah, I like my world. We learned that Steve Kern could have been WWF champ. Could have been, but then he would have turned into Skinner and ruined everything. <laughs> There you go. I hate that gimmick. Why did they do that to him? Our own Jimmy Farrell, along with his partner, Bart Griggs, make up the band Wisteria Hall. Wisteria Hall sings such great songs as In My Dreams, This Life, Not Far Behind, Here Comes the Rain. You can find their music on the Wisteria Hall YouTube page. What do you do when you go on a YouTube page, brother? You hit like and subscribe. That's it, man. And you can do that for the Monty Nefaro page also. But you do better than that. You become a member. Love it. Like, come on. Look at you, man. Finish the You're, program. You are all over I am. Yeah. Download Wisteria Hall's music off of all Spotify, over. Apple Music, Reverb Nation. If you didn't know it, you are watching the world. Finally. Number one pro wrestling broadcast. Yes. Thanks to Jim Beam. What? Said so. That's right. Catch us on the Monty DeFaro YouTube page, the Monty DeFaro Facebook Live page. Here's on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor, catch us on the Monty and the Faro Twitch TV page. And if you're lucky enough to live in New York, lucky. catch us on New York Cable, Channel 115 every Tuesday at 9 p.m. and Saturday morning at 11.30 a.m. and Channel 20 on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. where over 150,000 people watch weekly where you will catch our special guest in the consolidated version Ooh, of this show. Ooh, nice. And again, I'm going to ask everybody right. out there, please go and download the free app Intuitive. Spelled I-N-2-I-T-I-V-E. Intuitive. Get into it. You're into it, man. You're yeah. In it. And I try to screw you up every week you by can. spelling it wrong. And you it don't... Does, no. I know how to spell. It's the one <laughs> class that I passed. <laughs> And listen, guys. For example, again, Dick, D-I-C-K. <laughs> what? 
You always curse it, dude. Uh, that uh, dick is a curse? Yes, it that is. That is not a curse! Of course it is. No, it's not. I was referring to Richard, otherwise known as Dick. What's the problem? All right, then. You got to deal with it, man. I'm clean. <laughs> On the Intuitive Network, <laughs> you can get uh, documentaries, yeah. movies, yeah. comedy acts. But most importantly, what's that? The flagship show of the whole thing. The Monty and the Farrell. That's it, baby. That's, That's what it. I'm talking about. There Again, guys, it's it's free. You can't yeah. be free. No nope. quick roll call. Roy Batiste in the house. Phil, good to see you. What is up? What is up? Loose, good to see you. Jay Will, good to see you. Hey, hey. Who hey, else hey. we got here? Hey, hey. Davio, a w. mess in the house. What is up, Benny mess? Scala from the what? Dan and Benny show hey, are Benny. here. ESO Creative in the house, guys. Uh, ESO Loose. has a show on after this. It's the after show. But soon. ESO will be live nice. and going. Nice. Very Sean nice. Brunette, um, he wants another Billy Jack Haynes interview. I would, too. With Monty uh, I'm, I'm with you. I want that, too. Who else I got? Where here? is Jason Billy Jack, Morning. Though? Good to see you. What's up, Jason? Uh, Where is Billy Jack? Maria Davis, the first lady of wrestling. She's here. Maria. We love you, Maria. And if I missed anybody, we love you. And again, the show gets ahead of me. I never keep control. So I want to wish everybody a please have a safe yes. and wonderful 4th of July. We love you guys. And thank you to soldiers such as yourself for allowing us to have a 4th of July. Thank you. And well, thank you, Mr. Thank Farrell. You. We will be right back with a guest mm -hmm. that may actually finally agree with you, Faro. With what? That the Jets may make it to the Super Bowl, being that her f husband. Wahoo was a Jet. It was a Jet. But I don't know if she'll agree. We will find out. She'll but agree. But we will be Please. back. Please agree. With <laughs> the wife of Wahoo and McDaniel, author, yes. and many other things. Yes. Karen McDaniel. Stunning. See you in a moment. Manscaped? Uh-huh. Uh, you know, have you tried the new equipment that's been sent? I'm afraid because it says Weed Whacker. <laughs> I'm scared. Maven, Manscaped. What are you thinking about Love Manscaped, it. dude? You Love it. it. What do you use it for? Necessity. What, what don't I use it for? Put it this way. <laughs> the only hair what? I have on my entire body is these eyebrows yeah. that oh. you see. These wow. caterpillars racing to the middle of my nose. That's it. <laughs> that is it. That's all, that's all I have. And that's all I want. That's the so, brand. Manscaped? There's a you, must. We were talking before the show. There's nothing worse than just hair. Yeah. Right? Hair on a woman, hair on a man. It's just bad. Absolutely. And it's the one thing that the older I get, it starts growing more in unwanted areas. Absolutely. I hate it. I'm going to ask you a question. Uh oh Just going to go out there. Oh, boy. Go for it. You're doing a deed. Yes. <laughs> Again, I don't want you to have to admit this because we... As men, we try not to admit this, but if you're going to go oh, do the deed it. on a woman, I know would you rather have her be hairless or a little hair, racing stripe, or <laughs> racing stripe. full retro bush? <laughs> racing well, stripe. Retro bush is out. Yes, thank you. Retro bush is out. Yeah. Um, I don't mind a small, well-manicured landing strip. <laughs> Every now and then, if it's completely, and I'm talking like baby's ass bald, Mm. Then I, I start, where is that pedophilia line yeah. that I'm, that I'm, I don't, I don't wow. want to wander into that. That's very interesting. Like that. I never thought about wow. that. You're a smart dude. Holy shit. So if the landing strip is clean enough for the plane to go in smoothly, you're cool with that. If the landing strip is, has, like I said, well manicured, yeah. you yeah. can see both sides. It's not. Like blinking lights on both sides I, of that landing? I just don't, I don't want, <laughs> you know, I don't want the shrubbery going off into yeah. unwanted areas on that gotcha. as well. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, look but what you found. Ooh. I got to be all honest, gotcha. though. Hey, the, ah. the, the older I get, though, I don't, I think, I don't think I can be as... Uh, <laughs> I as, found as, it! Have, I found have it! Have you ever gone down there and, like, just, like, you, she slowly brings down the underwear, then... What is... Retro. Just, Absolutely. You're retro? like, whoa! Wow, yeah, like, I'm 46, like it pops out? Do you, like, walk out, or what do you do? No, I, try, I muster through. I muster up the <laughs> courage to get He's through. a trooper. <laughs> yeah. He's a trooper. <laughs> got to give him an yeah, not all Not all heroes wear capes. Yeah, I, there you no, go. I hear you. Uh, <laughs> there you listen, go. Can't, I couldn't, I couldn't say it. Super Bush. I couldn't say it. Well, 
<laughs> if you have the same beliefs as Maven does, Manscaped could help you. Absolutely. The weed whacker. Absolutely. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that I may have to, like, you know, go in a room, close the door, and hang out with the weed whacker for a little while. Yeah, I think you're a retro guy, aren't you? I like 70s adult films, if that's what you're getting at. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, with Ron that, Ron we're going to take a quick Batman. commercial break, anyway. and we'll be back with this wrestling icon, Maven. We will see you in a drop kick second. Uh -oh. Drop kick. All right, welcome back to the world's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty and Faro. And guys, at the commercial break, <laughs> the Janis Joplin Madonna conversation continued. So now we have our special guest, Karen McDaniel. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. I'm good. That, thank that, you. Thank you for having me on the show. No, oh, thank you, you so for coming. welcome. So, so welcome. let's put you on the spot. What? Janice Joplin or Madonna? Do, don't do that. Oh, I love Janice Joplin, but You're done. Madonna and ha -ha. I have a, the same trait. We had a we have that gap between our front teeth, so I can't hate her. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. But get a little deeper. And, but Stevie Nicks, you were talking about Stevie Nicks. Yeah. Heart. Love Stevie Nicks. Love oh, the raspy voice. Love Landslide, my favorite song. Absolutely. Fantastic it's a beautiful song. song. So just take your defeat and accept it and move on. I'm defeated. Yeah, if go. the guest has chosen John Chaplin, she's got I good lose. taste. She I knows. Yes. She's got, got good ears there. Thank you, Karen. Yes. Appreciate that. I so kind of lost it when Madonna got an English accent when she moved to England. <laughs> you know what? That's a great point. That, that is a, that was is. a bit she annoying. She got an English accent. <laughs> when did that? I missed all of that. What did she sound she like? Hello, get there, into my groove. Pretty guy. much. Is that what it sounds like? Pretty oh, much. I'm like a virgin. Pleased to meet you. I can't I can't yes. even picture it. Isn't that what happened, Karen, yes. right? She did. She did. When she married that English guy, her accent changed. <laughs> so she was doing Kabbalah with an English accent with the Jewish stuff? <laughs> I'm so confused. Does she know who she is at this point? I, I, I'm very not. confused. Oy. So also we brought up the subject oh, yeah. of transgender assistance Oy. for underage children. Hmm. Um, what are your thoughts on that? you think a child uh, or maybe even a teenager has a right to start influencing their Did you know what body? you wanted to do? Did you know what you wanted to do, period, for anything when you were a teenager? Now, I knew I was a girly girl, you know, but I don't think that everybody really knows what they are and... We seem to push these different things and make it seem to be okay, mm -hmm. and it's not okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's. I think they need to hold out on all that till they are grown. Agreed. You know, if you can't drink till you're 21, why right. should you be able to make your mind about everything else? Yeah, you know I think I'll saying? change what's down below, but I can't have a beer. Okay, what's yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Now, I my boys did at 14. I did let them go. Um, a personal friend put Wahoo on their forearms, tattooed it on the forearms, because I knew that would be something they would not ever waver. Wish they didn't have. Right, right. You know, if that they, I wouldn't have let them tattoo their girlfriend on their arm, but oh, they no. tattoo their dad's name because that would be something they, you know, would never wish they did not have. You know. Yep, that makes perfect sense. That to makes me. sense. Makes a perfect lot of sense. sense. Perfect sense. <laughs> Strange question though that you brought up Wahoo, right? Um, yes. Wrestling fans and really the in-depth wrestling fans love Wahoo McDaniel. But I want to know, how does that affect Karen McDaniel, right? Because do you feel like you're being identified now to the wrestling fan as the wife of Wahoo McDaniel? And Well, I hope so. It was an honor. I hope so. Go. It was quite an honor. There you go. You know, I was number five. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do know this. It yeah, took him five times to get it right. Number, he got yeah, it right on the fifth five, one. But I lasted 21 years. That's got to say something, right? There you go. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, no, but it was an honor. I mean, he was um, he was unique in all aspects. He was a very honest person. He was kind to people. He was good to people. On the opposite side, he had a temper that was, um, you know, but it was usually warranted. You know, if he lost his temper about something, it was usually warranted. Had a lot to do with the promoters not paying him his money, and he'd show out and he'd get fired. We moved eight times in, I don't know, ten years, and that's mm. when I finally planted it. I said, I'm not going to move again. <laughs> but they would fire him because he'd say what he thought. He stood up for the boys, you know. Nobody did that. Everybody was out for themselves and their dollar. 
but he'd stood up, stand up for the boys to make sure they got their money. He had me standing outside of Spartanburg Arena uh, with a clicker one night. I was clicking off the people that came in the match because he was afraid the Crockett's were going to screw him on his pay. He was business. He was all business. And he, di he didn't care what he said to you about that. He was business. You know. Which uh, I, make, I made him a different kind of guy. Yeah, it made him real. That's what it, it made, made him. him real. Yeah, good, yeah, good for him for being that way. I really don't know any other way myself. He was that way. He didn't. He, he was that way. He was totally that way. You know, if if he didn't feel like, because they got paid back then in the territories, they got paid on, um, you know, according to where they were on the card. And he could just about look at an arena and tell you how many people were sitting out there. He does, but that I mean, he it was his business. I've said this many times. Um, as far as wrestling was concerned, uh, and I feel bad for the guys, but most of them, that's all they have. Not Wahoo McDaniel. His wrestling was his, as he said, West Texas colloquialism, bidness. His bidness. It was his bidness. And he had golf. He had fishing. He had lots of friends. He had plenty of things that he did, you know, it, on, his, on his time off. It wasn't, he, he went to wrestle to work. And a lot of them don't have those outlets like he did. And a lot of them end up, you know, not doing so well because of that. I've seen it, you know. Uh, but, um, difficult. I think that's that's Go a ahead. good point. You know, he just lived his life. Difficult so. question. How long does it take to, or if it happens at all, how long does it take to heal from losing Wahoo? Um. Wahoo had been on dialysis for almost seven years. Hmm. And he was your typical American Indian. They're just like black people. They all have high blood pressure and diabetes. And he darn sure didn't take care of himself and didn't eat right. And he ended up on dialysis at 55 and died at 63. And, um, of course, I did not want to lose him, but he was beginning to suffer from it. And I could tell it. And he would tell me, Karen, I've done, and this is the truth. I have done, I'm, I'm, I'm start crying. I, I have done more than most any men in their lifetime would ever even consider possible. I'm good. He said, the only thing is that I'm not here for the boys. Is I'm not going to be here with the boys. He knew it was coming. He knew, you know, he knew it was coming. And, and it was really, it was affecting his being able to walk and other things. And the first five years on dialysis, he was playing golf every day. It was fine. But the last three years, I was seeing him fail, and he he wouldn't have wanted he he wouldn't have wanted that. He Will if he couldn't be the man man that he always was, you know, and he was, by all means that that would have not been, you know, that would have not been good. It was hard on me because I had three little boys to raise, you know. Well, well that's what I was going to ask you, Karen. Was was there a certain yeah. anger that you garnered because? You know, you just said Wahoo wasn't taking care of himself, didn't you? Felt did you feel that was selfish? Uh, you know, what was your feeling going through that? My feeling about that, I, I think it was selfish. But he he was selfish about the things that he did and the way that he ate and what you know. But like I said, he had lived more in sixty three years than most people do in eighty. You know, yeah, I mean, sure. really. Really and truly, if you look at the truth, yeah, I, I would be mad at him because, but remember, I'm a nurse too, so I'm, ignorance probably would have been blind. I mean, I knew what he was doing to himself, and we would, you know, when he wouldn't eat right, or, or he would get his blood sugar all out of whack, and, you know, all that kind of stuff, and I'd fuss and fuss at him, but he was kind of hard-headed, he wasn't an easy one to fuss at. You know, was it just his diet that was that was a, a bad part of his uh, uh, health, or you know, because I really have never heard much about Wahoo being there was, well, there was no he, drugs or alcohol or anything, was there? No, it, um, no, he was. Um, he had high blood pressure. When you saw him bleed at night, he was lowering his blood pressure. Mm. And to be perfectly honest, blood pressure medicine affected your libido way back in the day. They make better ones now, but he wouldn't take it. Right. Because that would affect his libido. Right. You understand? Right. Oh, I wouldn't take and it either. He wouldn't take it. His yeah. blood pressure would be off the chart and he but he he wouldn't take it. He you know, it you know, it took away his manhood, right. you know, so to speak. And yep. that's why you see a lot of American Indians and black people with high blood pressure 
having strokes and ending up on dialysis and et cetera, et cetera. Mm. I mean, that's what happens to them. It kills their kidneys, the high blood pressure and the diabetes. And he did develop diabetes at 40, but he inherited it. His dad had it. His dad was on dialysis. You know, his mother was a tall German, but, but he got all that Indian diabetes and high blood pressure and it wasn't, I mean, they never, he never smoked any cigarettes. His family smoked. He was around it, but he never smoked himself. Of course, he drank, and sometimes if he drank a little bit, he'd be drunk. Sometimes if he drank a lot, he wouldn't be at all. So you never knew, and I think that had to do with, you know, the fluctuation in blood sugar. But you got to realize, too, he, uh, he died in 02, and they've come out with all these uh, metformin and stuff like that. Since then, he went straight on the insulin. You know, they've got a lot of different things that they use now, you know. And plus, if they, he'd have had something where he didn't have to prick his finger all the time to check his blood sugar, you know, he would have been a little more conscious of it. But oh, Definitely. Know, I, just, was, I was just thinking that same thing as you explained it. If he was just a little more advanced, they, right. they've come in such big advances. Because yeah. he died 21 years ago. <laughs> That's a long time. It yeah, is. it is. Let me ask you this. We're just fans, right? But yeah. we've been around this pro wrestling thing for a bit now. Um, that's why we're the number one pro wrestling broadcast in the world. But in the Absolutely. world, let's, let's forget about that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not forgetting um, about it, but go ahead. So we understand that pro wrestling is a bit abnormal. But I got to ask you, Karen, right? Intelligent, beautiful lady. Knowing Wahoo was married four other times, why in the world would you hook up with <laughs> Wahoo McDaniel? Listen, if you read my book, the first chapter is, I don't want to meet a wrestler. And, uh, <laughs> and that was the truth. It played out that way. Beth Flair, she wasn't a uh, Flair yet, but she had been dating Rick. And we lived in Raleigh. She had. We grew up in a little town called Havana, Florida. It's right north of uh, Tallahassee on the Georgia line. Uh -huh. And my cousins lived in Raleigh, and I had moved up there, and she wanted to move up there with me. So we both worked in this bar called the Hilton Underground. And um, <laughs> and uh, Beth had met Rick, and we really and truly thought that he was, um, first of all, we thought he was, like, gay or something, because we didn't know anything about wrestlers. <laughs> 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 we didn't know what was wrong with him. And uh, he had all these women with him and stuff all the time. We just didn't even know what, it, you know, we didn't know anything about wrestling. And um, so, but anyway, she ended up meeting Rick. And about four years later, they wanted to introduce me to Wahoo. And I'm like, I don't want to meet a wrestler. I've already seen what you've been going through for four years. You know, I, I don't want to meet a wrestler. But they set it up and I had no longer, I was a nurse by that time. And I had no longer worked down there. But they had set it up where I came down there and I met him. And yes, he was 43, 44 years old, and I was 21, something like that. But I was a mature 21. My parents had adopted me, and they were much older, and I'd grown up. I was just an older old soul. And, but I didn't have to talk to him for five minutes without knowing this man is, there's something about this man. He carried himself. He talked. He wasn't the prettiest man in the world. He didn't have the most beautiful shaped body, nothing like that. But he could talk to you and he knew things and he he was just interesting. And he was not a bragger. I cannot stand a person who walks in the door and starts bragging about what they got, and what they did. I didn't know till after we were married. The only reason I ever found out he was great at a lot of sports things was people would start asking him. Didn't you punt a ball 91 yards against Iowa? And didn't you do this? And didn't you do that? I, he didn't ever brag about it. He didn't ever talk, I did this, and I was great at that, and I did this. And, you know, and that impressed me in a just any human being. That you don't just go around bragging about what you got I don't know why, or what you've done. Or He was just a real unique person. I mean, I didn't know he knew Joe Namath. I didn't know he, George Bush was his coach in high school. I didn't know any of that stuff. Mm. till after we were married and I'd hear people start talking about it to him. Well, as your as your good. name as your name dropping, uh he had friendships uh with people like Lee Trevino, Evil Knievel, Charlie Pride, Mickey Mantle. Uh Yeah, that was one of the best buddies. They kind of 
kind of grew up together there in Oklahoma. He would go to Oklahoma on the, in the summers and stay with his grandparents. And they knew each other as young, young people, really young people. So he was with Mickey when Mickey met his wife, the last one, I guess. I don't know which one. But Charlie <laughs> Pride, they were friends. Um, I have a, hold on a minute. I'm going to turn my phone around. Can you see, let's see, can you see that picture? Uh, yes. 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 Yep. It's Trevino and Charlie Pride and Wahoo. Wow. And But they played, um. They play golf all the time when they lived in Dallas. Now, this was a little bit before my time. I call it BK before Karen. But, uh, <laughs> um, but I, you know, I have the stories and 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 they're unique. And Evil Knievel was one of his best buddies too. Mm. Wow! <laughs> so, Did uh, Joe know. Namath ever stop by the house get fresh? Ah, sure. We want to kiss you. No, no. I never met Joe Namath. Um, <laughs> okay. About Joe. Talk about that, like he left the Jets or something because they hired Joe Namath. That's not true. Um, the truth is he complained that they were hiring and paying a kid right out of college who you did not know was going to perform or not mm -hmm. $400,000 a year when he right. was making $8,000 a year working right. for the New York Jets. That's the difference time frame of the money they made. Right. And it was all in the New York newspapers that he said that and he did say all that 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 wasn't right that they didn't right. know and he said yes yes it was a great move he was a great quarterback but you start paying them big money and they may just not do well the very first game in the first mm. season or whatever yep. but he was very outspoken there's a lot of articles um, in New York where he spoke out about the way things were run I mean well, he got himself probably more trouble all the way around but he um he ended up being um, the first one picked in the expansion draft for the Miami Dolphins. Is That's the reason he left New York. And honest to God, he wanted to go to Florida. And you know why? He he freed over for those um, big Jew fish back then. You could get those 200-something pound Jew fish. He wanted to go fishing. He wanted to go to Florida. <laughs> he walked away from Joe Namath to go fishing? The Jets actually yeah. won the freaking yeah. Super Bowl. But you know what, it though? Was Wah Wahoo was right in principle. Wahoo was right. Here, Joe Namath came in. Wahoo so. was right in principle, though, because although it turned out great for Joe Namath, we see yes. it all the time today where athletes come in, they haven't done squat, they get paid a fortune, and they suck. And so right. Wahoo was onto something even then. Right. right. But he made $18,000. His biggest years were with the Jets. He made $18,000 a year. That's what they made. They make and, $18,000 I mean, a snap. He wrestled yeah. the whole time he played foot, professional football. They right. didn't have contracts. Right. And his coaches would say he would be in better shape than the rest of them, but he'd been wrestling seven days a week, twice on Sunday, mm. the whole time he was off season, you know. But he played nine years, and he just didn't go back. I mean, he wasn't cut or anything. He just didn't go back. He was making more money wrestling. That's what I was going to ask you. Like, what was the difference in pay of him doing – shows in wrestling compared to the 18,000 he was making in the NFL. I would see I wasn't there in that time frame and we're talking about like the early 70s but I did find checks like you know you know how they used to return your checks mm -hmm. and he was making anywhere from 3 or 4,000 dollars a week mm. in the late 70s working that's, for the Crockett. Oh my now, god. Now that's a lot of money. It is. It is. It's a lot of money. I yeah. know in the 80s House payment was like six hundred dollars, and I mean, we had, I mean, he had with had I been smart, we'd have had a lot more money. This is another thing I'm gonna tell you about him, which I think makes him unique. And, and you tell me what I think about what kind of person he was. He must have seen something in me because there I was, 21 years old. I went, I got his check every week, every two weeks when they got paid. I was at the Crockett office to pick up his check. I got the check. It was my responsibility to take care of the bills, buy us a house, get us our cars, whatever. Everything was in my name anyway because he'd end up in a lawsuit and somebody would take it. So that was my responsibility. He said, I don't care what you do with the money, just pay my American Express bill off every month. Now, what 40-something-year-old man would put a 21-year-old girl responsible for his money? That told me right there that he must see something in me special. You know what I mean? That's yeah, awesome. Absolutely. That is awesome.
Yeah, and I wouldn't have thrown this money away. Now, if I'd been a little smarter at 21, I would have done a little more investing and a little more stock market, a little mm -hmm. more good stuff. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yep. Well, so, again, you but, know, who knew but at I that time that, that that was the way to go, really? But Yeah, true. So, Karen, it's clear that Wahoo trusted and loved you immensely. But, again, yes. we're talking about I, the wrestling world. Um when Wahoo's not around and you're around the neighborhood and some of these wrestlers are around, were they hitting on you? Was anyone ever trying to Hell get with no. you? Hell no. Never. Hell no. Out of fear Hell of Wahoo no. or out of fear of you? Yeah, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. Um, Interesting. Uh, I'm sure it was. You know, not even um, flair. I saw Greg. I saw Greg Gagne a couple of years ago, and I said, "God, you're mighty flirty." I mean, you never acted <laughs> like this around me. He said, "Of course not. I was scared to death of Wahoo." <laughs> there you go. There you go. And we... steam. And steamboat. And I'm going to see him in August. Steamboat. And I think he had just got married again. Anyway, he walked behind me. He was getting ready to leave to go out of the place that they were. You know, we were displaying all our you know, uh, merchandise to buy or whatever. And he grabbed a whole left cheek of my butt and squeezed it. And I and walked on by me. Now, this was like two years ago. And I looked at him. My eyes got big. He said, I've been wanting to do that for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't help but laugh, you know. Oh my God! Yeah, that's good stuff, man. Of Ricky Steamboat of all people. I figured Flair would be the, the guy doing that. Ricky the Dragon. Oh, no. Ricky the Dragon. Uh, uh, Flair, Flair knew. I knew. He, I, I knew his number, so he wouldn't have bothered with that. He, he wouldn't even bother. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, we we recently lost uh, superstar Billy Graham. Did uh, what was Wahoo's relationship with? Uh, did he have a relationship with Superstar Graham or his thoughts yes, on him? Yes, I think they were pretty close when they wrestled. Now, I actually never met him. I think he had, if you, we weren't in the same territory you with that person, then I didn't usually know them. There are several people that people assume that I know, but I actually would have never met them because we weren't in the same territory. And they were in Florida and I think Georgia together, you know, a lot. But, um, Florida. Um, but, the Mid-Atlantic is where most of the people I knew, you know, even down to the Armstrongs, you know, back even back then. Because every one of them came through that Mid-Atlantic during that time. And then, of course, we were in Minneapolis. And um, I met Hulk Hogan. He was just gotten to Minneapolis. And um, this is a cute, you'll like this story. He said, I said, he said, it's very nice to meet you, Miss McDaniel. I said, well, it's nice to meet you. He said, uh, I have heard your husband will give anyone the shirt off his back. Wahoo well, said, yeah, and I'm running out of shirts. <laughs> but that's the kind of person he was. Wow. Karen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a question, and it's it's a tough one. Um, but I want to I wanna kind of get to know you. Uh, I heard you on numerous shows, and I remember listening to you, and I was thinking, oh, what a wonderful lady uh, this sounds. And... Becoming friends with you on Facebook or seeing some of the things you've gone through, I I I know you lost two children. Oh, it's been tough. It, that's what I was going to ask you. How's that? How's that going? Um, goodness, I don't. That's a very yeah. There we are. Um, okay. Well, I have Zach. That's the one in the lower picture there, and he's thirty four, and he is the captain of the Sea Screamer, which is a kind of honorable job down here in Panama City Beach. It holds 80 people, and they do four tours a day. And um, he's, a he's a very responsible captain out there. And um, and then, I, if you know, I lost Storm, my, our young, my youngest son. Our youngest son, he was 17, almost 18. He had been Dolphin Tour Guide since he was 14. And... Um, he was leading 10 jet skis out and a boat, I guess, decided to beat that line of jet skis and hit him. And Storm was 6'3", 230 pounds. We went to the gym together three times a week. He was phenomenal. Um, but it hit him and killed him instantly. He came home, he would come home from the gym and say, Mom, they keep telling me I'm going to look like this guy, Randy Orton, when if I keep working out. Now, he didn't even know who Randy Orton was, you know. Mm -hmm. But he had that same body. He has the same body as oh, Randy wow. Orton. He was, 
and he was such an exceptional i mean on the friday before he was killed on wednesday he came in and he handed me 500 dollars. that's a storm you are almost 18 you want to get your apartment he said mom i put plenty of money up you need this more than i do you know so i had when i think about those things it's like why on earth would it happen to him and why would you take him from me you know what i'm saying oh yeah and i recently lost nolan nolan was born in charlotte and he was in the nicu for 11 months no birth effects it's just what uh, happened to him at the birth and then he was on a lot of different procedures and everything and they told me um he wouldn't make it to 10 years old he wouldn't make it to 20 years old and a year ago on valentine's day was his 30th birthday and a few days after he looked at me and he said mom he said i made it to 30. now nolan was a little behind he worked a good wheel he was very happy he did Special Olympics. He played a great game of golf. He golf. Nolan, um, while he was taking to play golf when he was little, oxygen and all. He wore oxygen until he was nine years old, and um, um, you know he had a deficit in his heart from the procedure they had done to him. So he had a lot of issues that he seemed to live with and overcome. And I guess I just decided in my brain that um, that he would outlive me and I wouldn't have to go through it again. You know what I mean? Sure. And um, so um, last year, it was a year ago, and the a few days after his birthday, he looked at me and he told his interpreter, because he was hearing impaired too, he sign language, he told her, he told me, he said, um, Mom, I made it to my 30th birthday. He said, this is my last birthday. I said, what are you talking about? We're going to the CAC next year. We're going to we're going to see Kiss again. We've seen Kiss five times. He loved Kiss. Oh, yeah. And uh, nice. I just kind of, you know, and then one month later, he died in his sleep. And he had just been to his neurologist, and he'd just been to his cardiologist, and he had a lower ejection fraction in his heart. And I think that he just, what they said is that he probably just had a seizure and then his heart just couldn't take it that last time, mm. you know. So it, I, I, I don't know. I was an ER nurse. That was, the, <laughs> I'm an ER nurse. So I put a lot of young parents, parents, children in the black bag and taken them to the cold room, mm. you know. And I, that is, I can't. I can't express to you what that's like, and I had to do that with Storm. I didn't take him to the cold room, but I had to walk out the ER room when I knew where he was going. And then Nolan was here in the house. So I, d I don't know what you can say or what I can say. I will tell you that last year I kind of crawled in a hole for a while. and But I do know that they wouldn't want me to be that way. I was always like the strong mom, the you know, the tough mom, and I don't think either one of them would want me to crawl in a hole and not try to still live. Now, I will tell you, it is not easy. None of it's easy. And poor Zach, my oldest son, he'll call me. I think he's, he's he, if he doesn't get me in two or three days or something, you know, he'll be like, oh, oh, oh. and I know he's busy. He's married with two little children. He just lives a couple of miles away. But, um, I don't know what that's done to him, too, to not only lose his dad, but to lose both his brothers. You know? I don't know. I don't know what I else to say. I, it's, uh, wow. But late, but in the last, I, like I said, in the last few weeks, I've kind of come out of my shell. I'm going out to the beach again. I've been working in the yard, doing the pool. I'm making another robe. These collectors, good God, all they want me to do is repeat the robes I made for Flair. I, you know what I tell them? I said, I know what it is. Y'all know when I croak, it's got my name in it, so it's going to be worth a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, Karen, could you go well, I, into that? Were you making Ric Flair's ropes? I did. Olivia Walker was um, uh, Johnny Walker's wife. She made a lot of his robes. I made about, I made that white one that everybody loves, the white one that everybody loves the best with the um rhinestones it's a white one with the butterflies and the yeah. rhinestones the one worth and, i think uh, just sold for seventy thousand dollars on Treasure. i didn't think they found it they duplicated it somebody um duplicated it for his last match but that was my robe i made it and i made a hot pink one and i made a black one with the ostrich feathers and i made a jungle robe and i'm repeating that jungle robe now 
actually i i got the jungle robe beth brought it to me and it was ripped all to pieces and the animals were coming off of it and it didn't have a belt and it didn't have a, anything so i remade it and then put ostrich feathers on it and did all that so this collector wants a jungle robe so i make i'm sitting here thinking to myself what was i thinking <laughs> getting to do this mess again because it's hard it's it takes hours you know to do all the embroidery work and the rhinestones and the ostrich feathers i have to dye them with tea bags to get them that color orange but yeah i did i did that back then amazing. i did that back then amazing amazing i so, hope flair paid you good for these robes because that's part of his image and he made a fortune off his image so fork it over rick i know well he did i mean wahoo's the one that set that up wahoo kept me busy i even made tv food for the tv i would make all the sandwich meat and the um uh, oh god uh valentine used to meet me at the door to get i made that robe that's the robe i made um Gorgeous. valentine would meet me at the damn door to eat my deviled eggs i had a whole spread i would take to channel 36 in charlotte and unload and set up for them to do their tv that they did on wednesdays i think it was in charlotte so i did he had me so busy i got a check from the crockets for that too um he had me busy doing stuff i guess that was better than you know than me not doing anything but i did i there was about i think three or four robes i made for rick and i made two for tully I made Rick Rube, Rude a black robe, um, and I used to make John Studd's clothes because they didn't have big and tall like they back then as much. I made him a shirt, a dress shirt, a pair of pants. That was complicated. I made Manny Fernandez um, chaps and, and vest and... Well, Karen, can I, I ask you, like, that. how does how does John, what does John Studd come to you and say, can you make my clothes for me? Like, how does that conversation even happen? I don't know. Probably Wahoo said, "Oh, my wife can make it." <laughs> That's probably how that happened. I don't really, I don't really don't remember how that happened. But Beth came to me about really uh, too about Flair. About I know a couple of the robes, you know, because um, I guess Olivia was still making them, but he needed one for this or he needed one for that. And back then, I could sit up all night and sew and see, and I can't do that anymore. My neck hurts. <laughs> you know. So, but these collectors are cute. They want them. And I said, okay, I can make it. You know, Karen, did Wahoo so. ever share with you why we were WWF fans growing up, right? In the Northeast, obviously. Yeah. Uh, we only could see NWA when cable started coming out. Yeah. Did Wahoo right. ever say that he wanted to come up here and work or was it not um, what he wanted to do? I had Vince's number in his briefcase in there from, I don't know about the eighties. I think Vince had called him. Um, he worked for Vince's dad, you know, right. at, in Madison Square Gardens. Right. He worked there. Um, it, but he was always, he was, I don't know, the Mid-Atlantic sucked him in. Uh, the AWA, it just never, it never worked out that he went back up there. I don't, he was out there with Blanchard, um, with Tully's dad in West Texas. And um, he was the booker in Florida during the 80s. We moved to Florida for three or four years and he was the booker down there. And he liked being the booker. He was a booker in the Mid-Atlantic for a good bit of the time. And he liked being the booker. And that opportunity didn't come up there, you know. And I, I honest to God, can tell you right now, he would have never gotten along with Vince. You know, he would have, I mean, he's flipped a lot of promoters' desk over. And I can see him flipping oh, Vince's boy. desk over right now. Oh, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Right. I don't know Vince. I've never met him. I shouldn't talk about him. But I just... I can tell you, if it, it would be Wahoo's way or no way. You know what I mean? Sure. So I don't know that they would have ever seen even close to eye to eye on anything. You know. I think I think you're onto something there. I, it, it's very two very strong personalities and uh, something yeah. you have to give. Right. Yeah. There was his number was in his his um, briefcase. It's it, it's still in there. I'm sure it's. It, it's not his number but anymore, but it was right. a number to call. It could have been the office number or something, but I saw it in there. So I don't know if it was, I mean, as far as I know, he never called it, you know. Karen, so, you're, you're pretty but impressed. that was kind of that. Say that what? again, I'm sorry. 
I just said that was kind of that. That's about really all yeah. I remember about that is is most of our time was in the Mid Atlantic, Florida, um, Georgia, Texas, yeah. Minneapolis. Yep. You know, he loved Minneapolis because we could go fishing all the time. Texas too, and North Carolina. <laughs> so, Karen, anybody uh, watching this interview that may not say they didn't even know you, it's clear what a strong, intelligent woman you are. Where do you? Who do you credit that for? Oh, I don't know. Probably my mother that adopted me. I mean, she really made me, I think she made me a good, good, honest, see it as it comes kind of person. She was exceptional. And, um, and then Wahoo, he told me, he said, I'm going to make you tough. So when I'm gone, you can take care of yourself. Well, guess what? I can take care of myself and everybody else. <laughs> Damn straight. I'm just, I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'm running out of shirts. <laughs> <laughs> So Karen, good. it's been an honor to have you on the show. We're oh, gonna hit thank you so much. We're thank gonna hit you so much. I didn't mean to talk so much. No, what? that's what you're here for. No, you're <laughs> we could have gone, gone on for hours. Trust me. Uh, who wants to hear us? Um, I'd rather hear her. Hey. We're going to hit you with something called the Pharaoh's final question. I don't know what okay. he's going to oh, ask here you. We go. Again, it could be, oh. will the Jets make the Super Bowl this year? Hint, hint. But uh, we're going to hit you with that. Let's go ahead, right. Jimmy. I'm, I'm a Jets fan. A hint, hint. I mean, you like, know, Wahoo was the only one to ever have his first name on the back of a jersey, right. NFL, AFL, or USFL. Right. Yes. And it was the New York Jets. He had Wahoo right. on the back of his jersey. So we got a shot this year? Or what? We got Aaron Rodgers. Come on, say we got a shot. Of course. If you got Aaron Rodgers, you got a shot. Damn sky. Oh, I told you she? Karen McDaniel would agree with you. She's beautiful you got and Aaron brilliant. Rogers, you got a shot, man. Yeah, we do. We do have a shot. All right, what's Absolutely. the real Pharaoh's I'll final question? Him. He, okay. I like him. Oh, he's great. I like he's, him. He's smooth. Yeah, I like, I like him. Yep. I like him. Yep, we're going to get some uh, real results. Before you ask that question, though, Karen, I do want to tell you this. If the Pharaoh yes. predicts the Jets are going to get to the Super Bowl, I, I did not. the season's over, so I don't did, encourage stop, him. Would you stop it? They haven't won in over half a century. How is it my fault? This guy's ridiculous. He's ridiculous. cruel to you, isn't he? Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. You see that? I see it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So what are we doing this weekend anyway, Karen? We're picking on him. I'm, I'm telling you. You are, you are unbelievable. Uh, All hilarious. right. Uh, much more serious uh, question, obviously. Yes. Um, yes. You get to see Wahoo on the other side. What would you say to Wahoo being reunited? What would I say to Wahoo on the other side being reunited? You really want to know? I'd probably say his his favorite line because if I ever complained about something, I'd be complaining. I what the heck happened to me? You know what he say to me? Too bad. <laughs> I'd probably say too bad. Here I am. Too bad. <laughs> he said it such as like such a nice simple answer for a difficult question. Say too bad. There we go. Karen, where he can was, the fans see you in the future? Totally. What, dear? I'm sorry. Where could the fans see you in the future, Karen? Uh, well, I'm going to go to the, I will be at the gathering uh, in Charlotte, August the 3rd through the 7th, and uh, that's at the University Hilton. Uh, I meet Barbara Bro uh, Brody, Goodish, Barbara Goodish. She and I usually will set up together, and um, so she has a book, I have a book. And we set up together, and uh, we had a blast. I love her. I never knew her when, but we met um, a few years ago at that, at actually, that same event. We just got to be great buddies. And um, um, I stayed in the room. We stayed together at the CAC this past year, and that was a lot of fun. I like her. She's a great girl. You know who I'm speaking of, Brody's wife? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. She's a great. She's a very, very nice, nice person. I like her a lot. She liked me too. It's first instant, you know. So, because we both had the, you, a lot of stuff happen, you know. All right, so, I'm gonna. I'm. You know what? We were supposed to hit the final question, but now I have to ask the question because it seems like okay. you love everybody. So I'm gonna ask you, what pro wrestler did you run across that you wanted to spit in their face? Ooh. Oh, you really want to ask me that? Of course. Oh, yes. of course this is do. the Monty and the Pharaoh show. You haven't heard? <laughs> really and truly, the one that I did not care for was Lex Luger. Oh. And the reason I did not care for him is that I remember my husband saying when he was the booker and he came in 
Florida that I'm not in here for this business. I'm just here for the money or for a little while or, or something like that. So it is true. And there you go. that that was something that really bothered me. I never, you know, I could, I just didn't see him. I mean, that that's the honest to goodness truth. And me and Tully Blanchard hit heads a few times, but we're good friends now. But we hit heads a few times back in the day because he would keep Wahoo out too late. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I can see that. Poor Tully, I mean, he got a, he got he probably got his ass raped. Right. Probably did. He probably Karen, did. thank you for joining us. I'm wishing you a You're great welcome. Fourth of July. Uh, you were fantastic, and what an incredible human being. Thank you again. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Karen. All right, Farrah, wind us up. What do you think? Well, she rocks, and she's got good taste in music, and she knows what she's doing, and she handled her man's bank account. She was definitely she rocks. Pro, she was definitely pro Farrah. She just one she in. A, what do I get? One in a hundred. Got one out of a hundred. I get like one out of a hundred. But up, that's that's a great one to have. I so. but I I think I meant what yeah. I said because I was thinking like, okay, so you you're know, mean to me. I am. You heard what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Look at hey, babe's dying over there. Um, He's really not that mean. No, not but all I, the time. what I not what I was time. thinking though is yeah. if you, again, if you didn't know her, right? You just knew this was Wahoo McDaniel's wife. Right. What an incredible human being, man. Man, oh man. I What do you find like, so I totally She get took it. care of everything for him. But Are you like, serious? I get why he said just take care of like he just, she, he knew. You know what, though? He must have had great instincts, though, because yeah. for, for look, look, 40, what was he, 40-something, she said? Yeah. And she's 21? Right. You better have good instincts if you're about to hand over all your hard work to someone. So he obviously chose wisely. Make wise choices, folks. Not to be disrespectful, though. What? What? But Damn, Wahoo pulls a 21-year-old at 43 years old. Well, that's old. because, what did and you, a, a, what did a, you a, say? A to me? really hot 21-year-old. Oh, she's just, right. ow. But what did you say to me before the show? What did I say? Wahoo was a man's man. man. Yes. This is a big boy. Yep. He's a football stud. He's a wrestling stud. But you know what, though? She said it herself. It wasn't his looks. It was how he spoke to her. So you know something, packaging is all is all nice and dandy, but if there's nothing inside the package, something inside the box, then what's it worth? Another interesting fact. Yeah. Didn't take blood pressure medicine because right. he did not want to have a problem. I with wouldn't that either. Right? Priorities, baby. Really? Absolutely. Wow. I, I salute him. Absolutely. That's what I would have done. I'd also, well, I would have probably dealt with the same thing. I, personally, no I think these were, t you know, we had JoJo in Saturday. She was incredible. Yeah, but this, she's more incredible. Who do we have on Thursday? I'm trying. Well, you're gonna, I can't remember oh, no, what happened Tommy earlier Cairo today. Thursday. Tommy Cairo was great. Right. And now we had Jacques Rougeau on this oh, week. Oh, the Mountie was killed. Next week will be this week of wrestling. We're just covering wrestling, no interview, right? Right. And we got Steve Kern. Steve Kern. On the regular show. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming out, man. Stuff. This show is killing it as usual. I got to tell you. Unbelievable. Thanks to the audience, too, because without them, we're not killing it. No, so. without. And I want to wish everybody a happy 4th of July. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually, one of the holidays I actually like. There aren't too many holidays Farrell gets excited about. And I like 4th of July. You get a little nervous about maybe going to the beach and get hit bit by a shark. Well, here's the one good thing that I'm not going to do this 4th of July. I'm not going to wind up with no umbrella, and I'm not going to get burned like a freaking... Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm safe this 4th of July, I think, unless you're going to the beach. Am I going? I think it may rain. I think it may rain. Is it going to rain on the 4th? That's rotten. That's rotten. Well, what are you going to do? But I do like the 4th. It's, you know, Halloween is obviously anyway, my favorite holiday. I want to wish you a happy 4th. Yeah. Yes, sir. Abe, happy 4th. Happy 4th, Abe. Everybody out there, happy 4th. I want to again thank Jacques Rougeau, oh, incredible human being. He was great. And Karen McDaniel, oh, she another was incredible human being. Yep, absolutely. Live and learn. It's funny, too, with these interviews. I always feel like I've learned something. Well, they're not just regular, you know, yeah. how was that on bar? Oh, right. my God, you work 327 and a half days. Well, ah. It's amazing you know? because um, it's really not amazing. We got such a wonderful bunch of friends that watch the show. Yeah. They know so much about wrestling. Sure. I'm reading the comments. Yeah. And, the, like, they know it's, it's like, I don't have a clue. Like when it, when I read this, I'm like, holy cow! I didn't know that. Holy cow! We have that. a very holy smart cow, audience. A very smart. Audience. But like, here's an amazing like thing. That. Had no it's idea awesome. that Karen McDaniel was making Ric Flair's. No, I had no robes. idea either. But there was another lady that she had mentioned that's making robes too. Right. 
And the people knew right. who that person was. I'm like, I never heard of him. I don't even know. know. How did they even know this stuff? I, I, I could go back to the comments, but I, I think it was a J.A. Or, okay. Or, set, or maybe it was Loose. Okay. He said she also made Rudes and Orndorff's robes. How did these, how did and I'm like, holy stuff? cow. I don't wow. know any of this. Ay, ay, ay. You know what? With all the documentaries you watch, how did you not know that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you got to start watching more documentaries. I will tell you this. The one thing I was thinking when she's speaking is we had Chief J. Strongbow. Yeah. And they had Wahoo McDaniel. Right. And I thought maybe, and I think some people mentioned it too, I always thought Wahoo never came up here because we had because Chief, Chief J. J. But then I thought to myself. But Wahoo did work here during the 70s sometimes with, for senior. Yeah. That's why we don't but have memories of him. It was like a garden him. shot, I think. Right. right. We don't have memories of him with Junior because there were none. But here's the question right. to you. If you had your druthers and you could just stop time and do whatever, yeah, would you have rather had Wahoo or Chief J? Oh, Wahoo, Wahoo, clearly. First of all, Wahoo specimen. Chief J. I, I, but I, Wahoo was here's a the though, but big here's the problem though. Bruising. Chief J was beatable. Right. Where Wahoo was less not beatable. beatable. Less no, beatable. Right. So it's like. Could you have put him in the role with Jules Strongbow and imagine that they would lose that Wahoo tag team wouldn't, title? Wouldn't be, they wouldn't waste their time with something like that. Wahoo would be a, a higher Just up be on the high level. Listen, Wahoo was a stud. Right. Okay, I remember what, reading about him all the time in the magazines, and he always came across as the penthouse top tier. Sure, you got your flair and Hogan. I got all of that, but he was clearly up at the top. So I never looked at Wahoo, although, to be honest... Chief J was up at the top, too, he especially was. during the 70s. He was, yeah. Who do I prefer? And it was over as hell. Who do I prefer? I prefer the guy who played for the Jets and the and the bigger specimen. Would Wahoo been over like Chief J was? Yeah, I think so. I think so. They they, they would have marked out. I Can't mean, argue with that. Uh, I, you know, I, I, think so, I think so. Especially if you book him correctly and he's fighting all the uh, Wahoo McDaniel versus Sergeant Slaughter. Wahoo McDaniel versus Killer Khan. Wahoo McDaniel versus mm. you know, Greg Valentine. You know, Morocco. Wahoo was The problem over. is, it's like, how, do he you was win, over how would you fans. let Killer Khan beat Wahoo McDaniel? Oh, he's not. Wahoo's winning. This, so then you lose Wahoo's Killer Khan. Wahoo's going to lose. Like, also, you have no bad well, you guys. you do that after Killer Khan loses to Backlund. So, so you say Wahoo becomes you see what Tony I'm Atlas saying? slash Ivan Putski. Tony Putsky. Atlas, Ivan Putski, something that role, like that. Exactly. Finisher. But he's clearly a top top of the tier card guy. Right. Always With worked. that, send us on our way, big guy. You've been watching Monty and the Pharaoh. And until next time, thank you for letting us come into your homes. On behalf of Mr. Monty, Abe the producer, I am the Pharaoh. Later.